Hello and welcome to The Bike Show. A bit later on, we'll bring you all the latest motorcycle news from the Tokyo Motor Show. But first, Donovan's at the track with a superbike and a problem. Over here we have the Suzuki GSX-R1000, a bike we've done to death on the bike show. We've given it our full stamp of approval. We absolutely love it. But now it gets a bit complicated because they've just launched this. It's what we like to call the pirate version. It's the GSX-R1000 R. What it basically is, is much the same as that bike, but with a few little added tidbits to make it a little bit more hardcore, a little bit more racy. But it also gets a premium price tag of 35,000 Rand more than the standard one. And what we want to know is, is it worth 35,000 Rand? Let's take a look. To do that, we thought we would look at every aspect individually and give each a monetary value. To help us, we've recruited the services of Robert Portman. He is the editor of Ride Fast magazine, a former national racer and a multiple champion. To him, it's all about professionalism, precision, sophistication, and pushing everything to the limit. Then there's me, and I am, well, none of those things. And then we have the bikes themselves. They both make use of the same inline four-cylinder motor that pushes 200 horsepower. They both make use of the same twin spar aluminum frame, and they both weigh roughly 200 kilograms. They also use the same six-direction IMU, but the big draw card for the R version is the both ways quick shifter that the non-R doesn't have. Well, that's in the rest of the world. Suzuki South Africa, however, offer the non-R version with the quick shifter system free. That's a big blow for the R, but we won't let that deter us, and we carry on with our quest. Next, we thought we'd look at the styling differences, and here again, there's a bit of a problem. They haven't exactly splashed out for the R, have they? They haven't, and if I was um, rocking up to a breakfast run with my mate, and I had the R, paid an extra 35,000 Rand, and he rocks up, with a base model right next to me and no exactly one knows the, the difference, same, yeah. I will cry. It doesn't look 35 grand more expensive. There are some telltales. I mean, there's uh, obviously the front forks. There's a little extra, well, it's a bit Shaft. Of, yes, <laughs> shaft the big there. piston front forks. Yeah, there's um, that. And you can tell that it's the R because there is a sticker on the back. Yeah. It says R. Graphic design. Every graphic designer has dreamed that sticker on the back. Uh, Ali's <laughs> okay. small little strip of LED lights on the front, just above I didn't the even notice that at first. funny yeah, shaped little headlight and yeah. then color-coded air ducts on the R. I like the black on the standard one better. I don't, so that's your problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what amazes me is still, even on the R, there is no rear mudguard. No, like, hugger thing. No hugger thing. I think there would. Another thing that you'll only notice when you ride it is the dash is different. Now, on the standard one, we always sort of criticize the, the, the dash because, I mean, although they've now gone LED instead of the analog, it is a bit Nokia-ish. <laughs> it's not very imaginative. I had it? one of those dashes 20 years ago when I was <laughs> Yeah, exactly. School. But what they have done in the R version is they've just inverted the colors. Now, it does exactly the same function. I mean, it doesn't help you join Tinder or anything, but it does look cooler, I think. It does look a bit better. Um, not that you pay any notice to it really out on track. Uh, Electronics-wise, it does. The, the R does come standard with a quick shifter and the auto blip and launch ah, control, which I don't the, know. But the standard one now comes up with now, a quick shifter yeah. also. Suzuki okay. have done a great job with the R in pricing it quite well at 275 though, I think if you look at its competitors, Honda 300, mm. uh, R1 M399, Aprilia 319, Kawasaki 290, so it's a lot of bark for what but these is it days really is worth 35 grand? Well, that's what we're about to find out, I suppose. So the styling of the R didn't do much to help its case, but what about the other big electronic feature it has that the non-R doesn't have? a launch control system. To test this, we thought we'd get one of us to do a 200 meter drag on the R model with the launch control on and another with it turned off, and then obviously show the difference. It was decided that Rob was the far more expendable of the two of us, thus he got the honors. After a bit of practice, we set off for the two timed runs. And before he pulls off, listen to that excellent sound of the launch control at full song. And they're off, and the LC getting a good pull off, and then... Oh dear, this hasn't gone well. 
We are not sure why, but after a good pull-off, the LC carries on hindering the bike's performance, meaning the bike without the launch control comes steaming past. With things not looking great for the R model, we thought we would move on to the final test, the cornering. The R model has the upgraded shower balance-free forks, or BFF forever, yo. It also has the balance-free rear cushion shock. Will these two upgrades make all the difference? We start with the non-R version. We are so spoiled as a modern day motorcycle public to have base models like we do today. I mean, these bikes are incredible. Mick Doohan, Cole Fogarty, eat your heart out. You didn't have the same kind of tech when you were winning all those races and going oh so fast as what I do under my legs right now. The front end is just so good on the new Suzuki. You really can just put it wherever you want. And it just sticks like absolute glue. As we said previously on the bike show, what amazes me every time I ride this GSX R1000 is how easily it turns in. I mean, watch over here. You come to the corner, the slightest little nudge of the handlebar, and pop. There we go. There we go. You can not feel that this isn't the sort of most sophisticated suspension. And here we go, a few bumps. Oh, there we go. It gets a bit overwhelmed. It's not terrible, though. And now we step across onto the R. So I've just given it a bit of stick, as they say, on the new Jersey 1000 R. And uh, to be honest, I can feel a difference. And you should be able to feel a difference. The big piston front forks from shower and the rear shock just feel a lot more solid. Got a lot more of a direct feel. Because of the harder setup and the harder, more racy front forks and rear shock, you do have to work it a bit, but that's what you want as a racer. And I'm not sure how to admit this, but the non R turned in a lot better. I mean, you look at the forks on this thing, they pulled through like 80 mils. It looks like the bike should just tip in for nothing, but it's actually quite heavy. You have to sort of muscle it into the corner. But then once you're in the corner, it's just so solid, so stable. The front forks, even off showroom standard uh, uh, settings as we've got it here, feel really good, but there's so much more improvement that can come out of it. And that is where the big difference between the R and the base model R is, is that you can get so much more adjustment and so much more feel out of the big piston front forks and the fully adjustable rear shock. So, if you want to go racing, it just makes sense. You get yourself the GSX 1000 R, all you have to do is buy a fairing kit, an exhaust pipe, and you go racing. You've got the suspension that can go fast and handle any race conditions. So after a day at the track, we did what all track riders do and settled down at the track canteen for a chat. Okay, so Rob, a day on the track, we now have to determine is the R version better than the non R version? Okay, we're gonna put a monetary value to these. Let's start with the looks. We, well, the sticker. How much would you say a sticker is? Uh, with graphic design fee, let's say 50 no, bucks. 50 bucks, okay, cool. So 50 Rand for a sticker. Yeah, that with an extra <laughs> Okay, R. sure enough. Uh, the LEDs, little LEDs that I didn't actually notice that you pointed out. Yeah, I'd say a thousand Rand aside, so two thousand Rand. So two thousand Rand for those. Uh, 
then we have the dash. I mean, the inverted dash. I thought the inverted dash looks properly cool. Mm -hmm. I think the other one looks a little bit boring. What price should we put onto that? Well, you've got to probably pay a very clever Japanese guy to press enter on a keyboard to activate that. <laughs> no, so man. two grand? Two grand. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So two grand. Then we got the launch control. That didn't work so well. It didn't. It worked yeah. nicely on the initial launch, but with a tall first gear and not at yeah, sea level yeah. like you pointed well, out. Yeah, what people don't realize is right here in Johannesburg, near Johannesburg, we are nearly a mile above mm, sea level. Mm. So our bikes do have a lot less power here. And maybe, yeah, maybe that doesn't, it's overcompensating for where we are now. I'm sure down at the coast it'll probably yeah, work. Yeah, it was better. very easy to control but without the launch control. But yeah. it, did, it, it was a nice feature. It was, it was nice fun. to play with it. It yeah. sounds good. Yeah, it so there's not really a value <laughs> there. Now the big one, the suspension. Mm. The shower suspension on the R version. Uh, big for me, uh, at least 50 grand front and rear. 50 grand, the, I mean, it, 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 it's just got endless. Just the amount of, you know, you can get to a point in the base model where you can't adjust it anymore and you get the ultimate feel. And then after, already after 10 laps around you, it started feeling a bit more washy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the shower stuff, you can, it's got miles of adjustment. Uh, adjustment. You get a guy like Ricky Morales with his dirty paws in there, <laughs> set it up properly yeah, and you spanners. have got yes. a winning I've motorcycle. I've got to be honest, I was a bit apprehensive about the R version at first. I actually preferred the non-R. Mm. because it just turned in better, felt a bit more comfortable. But as I started riding more and more, and harder, yeah. I started riding harder. Eventually I got on the, the non I started feeling like an uncooked piece of cheesecake. Yeah. Well, when we did that <laughs> final photo shoot now, jumping from one to the other, I just felt, especially with the forks pulled through a bit more on the R, I could just dial into the turns a bit yeah, more. Yeah, it's a, a lot bit more, more direct. confident. Yeah. You can kind of Whereas shove it in the, there. the base one with the forks pulled right to the top almost flash, it just had that little float feeling. It's still yeah, got yeah, in there, yeah, yeah. just had that slight float. So for a racing, uh, a racing guy wanting to go racing, or group A rider, you buy the R, you put a fairing kit on it, you go racing, you don't have so to spend anything. you said what, 50,000 I would say 50 grand. I, I agree with that. So let's tally it up here, right? We've got to get 35,000 Rand, we've got 2,000 Rand for the dash, 2,000 Rand for the LED. Are you, are you the human I'm calculator? <laughs> <laughs> the sticker is 50 Rand, very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And then the suspension is 50,000 Rand. So that tallies up to 54,000 and 50 Rand. So, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The GSXR 1000R is 20 odd thousand rand more value than the non R. That's a good day of work. I isn't think it's it? a brilliant bike. 275 from the R Suzuki have done a great job. Look, it's also helped that they've now put the quick shifter and auto blip standard on the base model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suzuki SA, great People job. People not in South Africa, bad luck. <laughs>